real estate unemployment. Uh, what do you guys think? Marketing. Right. Marketing. I like marketing. So. Do you? I don't. Here's an opportunity that I see coming up. Um, San Antonio water system will start shutting off water again this fall. San Antonio customers who had trouble paying their water bills through the recent pandemic will have to catch up before the water disconnection service begins this fall. The San Antonio water system will start disconnecting water when the moratorium ends in October for customers with unpaid current or past bills board members discussed at the July 13th meeting. However, customers who enroll in a payment plan will be excluded from service disconnection. The utility will also start assessing late fees and accounts in August. So they're not shutting it off until October, but they're going to start assessing late fees starting August. But there will be no retroactive assessments. So SAW's representatives report that a June meeting that there were over 52 thousand delinquent accounts Whoa. 52 thousand delinquent accounts all right guys you're listening let that sink in the goal for saws is not to cut people uh cut people off says uh gavino ramos vice president of communications and external affairs it's to put them on a payment plan so that we can help partner we can help partner with them on paying their back bill uh, there are three, six, and nine-month plans. But Ramos says that he understands it may take longer for customers to catch up. We also ask uh, is they give us a call. The SAWS Uplift Program will put customers in touch with state and city partner agencies to provide financial assistance. So here's where I see the opportunity, right? That they are... They are offering a payment plan. The payment plan is only three, six, or nine months of a of, of a payment plan. Fifty two thousand homes delinquent. I imagine that there's quite a number of them that need much more than nine months. So they say you can reach out, and the SAW's uplift program is going to put you in contact with somebody in the state of city to try to help out. We've already seen it and heard it from people that when they do, it takes months. Sometimes they don't hear back. During this whole time, they're starting interest in August, and they're going to start shutting off water in October. That's not a very long time. you know. So now you have people that are getting their water shut off. That's a main necessity. When people are getting their water shut off and they can't afford to pay their water bill, I mean, these are people that are really struggling I mean, you're financially. On, you're really on the fringe if you can't afford your water bill. Yeah. Because like, water is not that expensive yep. as far as like overall bills of operating and owning a house or living so like your water bill might be what 40 to 70 dollars depending on it yeah. like it's not a whole lot that like man if you're really skimping on your water bill like man you really really you're you're hurting I mean, you're in it you're in it you're like well, bill and that, is, that was when i read this that was my thing like why you know to me it's a huge opportunity because there's just like foreclosure like when we talked about the the foreclosure crisis that's coming right what do we see is that there's people that are one, they're not even going to know that they can reach out and do a payment plan, right? There's people that are completely unaware and not just unaware, but they, they don't even do the research to see, Hey, is there any help for well, this? So all these people, that's where investors come in yeah. as investors, the good kind problem. We call us problem solvers, problem solvers. There you go. That, that we're going to put down our resume. We saw that on somebody's <laughs> resume for a pitch. I'm a problem solver. That's a good resume. Um, but good real estate investors are going to do this for homeowners. They're going to reach out to them. They're going to see that you're on the water shutoff list. Hey, did you know there's a payment plan? Did you know? Why do we do that? Because a lot of people are saying, get out of here. No investor is going to do that because you want to take the house. You're greedy. No, because at least for us, we want to help them out. Because if there's a way to help them out, guess what? That tends to bring us more business later. Yeah. Right. And if chances are just like foreclosures, if they fell behind before, there's an underlying issue that's much bigger. Because if you fall behind on paying your water bill, I mean, you are having issues paying damn near anything else. Right. Let alone your mortgage, let alone anything else. Well, I mean, so, or just a tenant. 
somebody that's just renting the house, like the water being turned off for them too. And the landlord, like, it's like, hey, do you know uh, your tenants had the water turned off because exactly. the property shows up on this house? Where it's like, it's easy to do. Like, you look it up and then you just the address and you see it's an absentee homeowner. Like the homeowner doesn't know that like, Hey, my tenant just had their water shut off or like, Hey, uh, you might be having a precursor here to having a problem here. Cause your rent rents thousand dollars a month and yeah. your tenant can't afford an $80 a water bill. Like you're eventually going to roll over and start having problems. So let me ask you too. The, the, let's say in a situation like that, right? The tenant didn't pay the water bill. They shut off the water. Whatever happens, tenant leaves, gets evicted, whatever. Does the landlord need to come in and take care of that water bill? What happens with that water bill? No, I mean, it's attached to that previous tenant because eventually they'll shut the water off. And when the person comes back on and says, hey, I need to turn water on at this service, my name is gotcha. John and the person's name was Steve. It's like yeah. they're not going to, they're going to go after Steve continuously to try to collect those back payments, but they're not going to attach it to the house. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I honestly, didn't I mean, well, know. I, guess, I was curious I guess, about that. I mean, I can't but, say that for certainty, but I'd say like I got a 95% at like, but if you guys, that's how it happened. If you guys don't understand like the goal that this opportunity is, I mean, you're not listening. You know, this is an opportunity that like even John brought it up. Like you want to niche down the 52,000 people that are behind, start looking for absentee landlords, uh, absentee homeowners. Because now you have absentee homeowners, like you said, that have tenants that are back on, uh, are falling behind on their water bill and they might get their water shut off where it's like now they have a troubled tenant. That tenant, if they couldn't pay their water bill, chances are they haven't been paying their more their rent either. I mean, you start thinking through this as an investor, there's a huge opportunity here for problem solving. Yeah. There's a huge opportunity. And this is a precursor to foreclosures. I mean, you want to know which properties are going to be in foreclosures? Yeah, again, they haven't been paying their water bill. Mm -hmm. Chances are they haven't been paying their mortgages. So let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about this strategy? Do you agree? Do you not? Are you confused? Or do you have questions about it? Let us know. Also, I'm going to try to find it, but we did an interview, remember, with uh, Rivar Report, uh, that they, they they came out with an article oh, that was bashing investors saying that we were taking advantage of people on the water shutoff list. Yeah. And then you had... Uh, Nuremberg come out and say, oh, yeah, it's completely disgraceful. It's like predatory. You know, we predatory. need to fix this. Like and one thing that I reached out to the um, Rivard report, the reporter. Yeah. The person that wrote the article. And I told him, I was like, hey, you should try to get both sides to the story before, you, you know, you start bashing investors. So he sat down with us and we told him, we're like, you know how many people you reach out to? They're on the water shutoff list. And you're telling them like, hey. If you're having troubles, like, and you need to sell your home, like, I'll buy it. Yeah. They're like, I can still sell it even though it doesn't have water. They didn't even know they can sell it. So they're over here living with no water, struggling, being in a ton of financial distress, mental distress, because they don't know what their options are. You understand? Are there bad investors? Yes. There's yeah. also bad doctors, bad politicians, bad believe reporter, it or not. <laughs> bad reporters. There's bad, bad reporters. There's, there's a bad apple in every industry. So they're bad. Yeah, bad people in every area. But the majority of us are actually good. Yeah. The majority we, of us were actually here to help. Well, because they also think of investor or housing investors. It's like, oh, you're just slum lord. You're taking advantage. Like everyone thinks that, and that's why, like, you have it, it sucks that you have to stop using the word like investor in pitches and things. Because like, oh, you're just trying to get a deal. You're trying to take advantage. Like, yes, yeah. we are in this for making a profit. But some of, of these people, they we when we told the guy, like, think about it. It's like if you can't pay your water, that means you can't maintain the house. Your foundation's probably bad. Your house is old, electrical roof, holes in the wall. Or you don't know who can sell it. No real estate agent wants to talk to you because like ah this house is crappy i don't want to deal with that yeah. but along comes an investor and saying hey i'll still buy you out from this house you got a mortgage underneath it i'll take care of that to where if they don't have that option they go into foreclosure like, that hits their credit score they they go back like they it's a downward spiral into poverty to where like we're coming in and providing an option it's like hey you can still buy out and they're also thinking if they can't take care of their house, it gets foreclosed on, it's in disrepair, and it sits there. And it's vacant, it becomes a problem for rodents, it becomes a problem for, I mean, eyesores, fire, uh, all kinds of things, which brings down the value of the neighborhood. Yeah. They're like, us coming in and buying it means that we are now take the financial responsibility and the legal responsibility. We don't buy these houses and just sit on them. Well, some people do. Yeah. Um, but we take it on, we buy it, we put capital into it because we have to provide, by law, a safe 
home for a tenant. Well, it's funny because I had a mentoring session with somebody recently and we were talking about marketing ideas and I threw a bunch of them at him. He's like, man, honestly, like, how is it that you keep coming up with all these marketing ideas? I was like, because you're not understanding what your job as a real estate investor is. Your job as a real estate investor, number one, is not necessarily to just make money. Your job is to think about what problem am I solving? That's the job of an entrepreneur, period. What makes a, an entrepreneur a successful entrepreneur is you're solving a problem that the world needs solved, right? That people need solved. The more people that you're solving that problem for, the more money you're actually going to make, mm -hmm. right? That Which is why Bezos is one of the richest people in the world. So That's you're... Scary. You're sub, you're solving a problem. I was like, think about it that way. What problems are we seeing in the world today? What problems are we seeing in our city today? Affordability, or is that a problem? Uh, tenants not paying their rent, is that a problem? Like, what problems are we seeing? And now figure out what could be a solution to that. Because wherever those problems are, there's an opportunity. You're just not thinking that way. You're thinking about, I just need a property to flip, right? And it's like, Okay, that's kind of like the end goal, but fall back a little bit. Yeah. What's the original problem? What, how can you generate that lead? How can you get well, that? And that's what we talk about. Like people got to get into real estate for the right reasons. Yeah. Or like if you're in it just to make money and you're looking at the wrong ways, like that's somebody that's in it for the short term. They're not going to make a career out of this. I mean, most some people could change and realize like what they're doing, but most people get into real estate thinking, oh, I can make a bunch of money, and after like two, three years, four years, realizing how much work this is and the burnout kicks in, they fall, they tend to fall out. 